for part three, uh, we're going to calculate the seepage quantity small q, so that's per unit length, and then the capital Q is the total seepage quantity, which is simply small q times the length of the structure capital L. And to calculate the seepage quantity Q, so let me go back here. And to calculate the seepage quantity Q, so depending on the uh, flow net, um, so I uh, list two scenarios here. So the first one is basically this example here. So this flow net has uh, rectangular elements. And rectangular elements basically means the length of the element L and the width of the flow element B, uh, the ratio of them is not equal to 1. So if we look at the flow net, the statement here, uh, for this flow net, we have first we have three flow channels, 1, 2, and 3. And for each flow channel, we have a flow quantity delta Q. So we have delta Q1, delta Q2, and delta Q3. So the total, the flow quantity Q is simply the sum of the uh, these flow quantities in each channel. And if you have non-rectangular flow elements, so channel 3, L over B is not 1, then you have to use this expression here. So you have to calculate basically delta Q for each flow channel and then add them up. And NF here, this is the number of flow channels. For example 2 here, NF equals to 3 because you have three flow channels. And then for each flow channel, this delta QI, this expression here is simply uh, Darcy's law. So you have K and then H over ND, this gives you delta H. So remember, this is called a potential drop. So delta H is H over ND. And this is basically the expression of Darcy's law. So if I just write it in a different form, delta QI equals to KIA. So that's Darcy's law. And then for this flow channel, K's permeability is the same. I is the potential or the head drop over the distance water travels. And if you look at this simple single flow element here, I is simply um, delta H over the distance water travels, that's length L of this flow element. And A is cross-sectional area perpendicular to the flow, which is simply B. Okay. And that's how you get this expression here. And if you substitute delta H, so K is delta H is capital H divided by ND then times B over L. So that's basically this expression here. Okay. So that's for flow net with rectangular element. So you use this expression. And then the second scenario I list here is a special case where all the flow elements are square elements. So in this case, L over B is one for all flow elements. In that case, it's, uh, there's a simplified expression. Q is sum of delta qi and equals to k times h over nd times nf. So this is for if your flow net consists of all square elements. So that's a special case. So now back to our example here, example two. Again, this is a case where not all elements are, are square. So you have rectangular elements in flow channel three. So if you look at this figure here, as I mentioned, there are three flow channels. So actually, this should be three, two, and one here. Okay. So flow number three, flow channel number three has some rectangular elements. And we're going to use that expression, the first scenario. So calculate delta Q for each flow channel and then sum of them up. So let me open a blank page here. And then for, this is part three. So for flow channel, one and the two, so for flow channel one and two, uh, the ratio of B over L is one. Okay, and then delta Q1 is the same as delta Q2 equals to K 
k times h over n d. And because b over l is 1, so that uh, I just omit that one. And then for flow channel 3, it has rectangular flow elements. So lb ratio is not 1. So b over l is 0.38. Then delta q3 is k times h over nd times b over l, which is 0.38. Then the total uh, flow quantity per unit length, because the uh, small q here, is the sum of these three delta q. So delta q1, delta q2, and delta q3. And if you plug in numbers, so that's 2.38 k times h over nd. And then uh, permeability is given. So so 2.38 times small k is 5 times 10 to negative 3, and it's centimeter per second. So we're going to convert that to meter per second. So I multiply that by 1 over 100. So this is centimeter to meter conversion. And then h is the total head loss. So we just calculate h is 3.4 divided by nd for this flow net is 6. And if you work out the uh, calculation here, you're going to get to small q of 6.74 times 10 to negative 5 meter cube per second and per unit length per m. Okay. Then the, so this is total per unit length. And then the total quantity, flow quantity, or seepage quantity for the entire length of the uh, sheet piles. So total, we call capital Q. So L is uh, 100 meters. It's simply small Q times L. So that's um, basically 6.74 times 10 to negative 3 meter cube per second. Okay. And then you can convert this to meter cube per day and you simply multiply this number 6.64 or 6.74 times 10 to negative 3 and multiply by 24 hours times 3600 seconds per hour. Okay. So that will convert it to meter cube per day which is 582 meter cube per day. So that's part three, uh, calculating the seepage quantity Q per unit length of sheep house and the total seepage quantity capital Q for a sheep house of length 100 meters. For the last part of this problem, we're going to calculate the factor of safety against the downstream heaving. And the factor of safety definition we adopt here is by hazard. And this is equation 9.23 in your textbook, where Fs, factor of safety, is defined as the ratio of two hydraulic gradients. So the if you look at the denominator first, it's Iexit. So this is the maximum exit gradient that you obtain from FlowNet. And I will illustrate how do we do this calculation. And then in the numerator, ICR stands for the critical hydraulic gradient. And the critical hydraulic gradient, ICR, is defined as the ratio of the buoyant unit weight of the soil. So this gamma prime is the buoyant unit weight. And gamma W in the denominator is the unit weight of water. And if you have the specific gravity information in the void ratio, you can use the phase diagram, the weight volume relationship uh, expression to convert ICR to an expression of specific gravity GS and void ratio E. And then back to the maximum exit ingredient. So this maximum 
uh, exit ingredient we call I exit is something we determine from a flow net. And this I exit is defined as delta H over L, where delta H is the potential drop. So delta H is total loss from upstream to downstream, it will call capital H, over number of potential drop delta D. And this small l here, that's the length of the critical flow element. And the critical flow element of a flow net, if I go back to this example two here, is at the downstream edge close to the sheet pile. So this element, this last flow element at the water exit next to your hydraulic structure, that's a critical flow element. And then the L is the length of this flow element. Again, uh, to get this L, just as what we did for the elevation head, you use the scale provided, and then you directly measure L from the graph. And for this example, L is 3.75 meters. So that's a small L. So now I'll go back to the definition. So we're going to use this factor of safety definition and calculate uh, the factor of safety uh, for this flow net. Okay. So this is part four. Uh, we're going to look at factor of safety against downstream heaving. And the critical element we know L, we just read this information from the graph. So this is about 3.75 meters. Okay. Again, that's this L, the length of the critical flow element. And then using uh, the definition of I exit, we so use the information of I exit, so we can calculate I exit equals to delta H over L. And delta H, we calculate from previous uh, parts, uh, part of one of this problem. It's 0.567 divided by L, 3.75, and this equals to 0.15. And then the critical hydraulic gradient ICR is gamma prime over gamma water. And for this example, we are given the saturated unit weight is 19.62, so that's given, minus unit weight of water, 8.1 divided by the unit weight of water. So this is approximately one. And then the factor of safety FS is the ratio of these two gradients, hydraulic gradients, ICR over I exit. And this is one over 0.15, and that's approximately 6.67. So that's part four. Or how do we get factor of safety from a given flow net? And finally, using what we learned in example two, we can calculate the applied pressure underneath a hydraulic structure. An example is given on this slide. You have a flow net underneath a hydraulic uh, structure. And to determine the applied pressure at any point, say point A here, this applied pressure is basically the pressure head at A times the unit weight of water, gamma W. And if you look at this definition, this right-hand side, this is nothing but the pore pressure at point A. So that's what we just learned in example two, part two. Using the flow net, you can calculate the pore pressure at any point in the flow net. And for this hydraulic structure case, it just happens that you want to know the pressure, uh, water pressure directly underneath the hydraulic structure. And on the right-hand side, this figure on the right-hand side, basically it's the distribution of the water pressure. If you obtain the values of this uh, pressure at A, B, C, D, E, and F, you can plot the distribution of this uplift pressure underneath your structure. So that's another um, use of uh, your flow net to calculate the uplift pressure.